Okay, for um, the modular solution example, we're going to use the same problem that we used in the alternation, that is uh, Sam's Auto Sales Company, and we're not going to change anything in this uh, statement of the problem uh, sheet that we had. Um, and our output, in fact, is going to look the same. It's not going to be any different either. So um, this is co what's called a transparent change to the user. Uh, we make changes to the software, but um, the output looks the same to the user. The input looks the same to the user. So to, for them, there is no difference, and they don't notice a change. Um, transparent changes by the programming department sometimes uh, if you make a mistake in making that change can cause the software not to run and in the past uh, transparent changes uh, users have become leery of that statement uh, because uh, programmers will say there's it's going to be a transparent change on Friday and the user might say something like well is this like the last transparent change where the so software didn't work being a little sarcastic so I tend to stay away or shy away from telling a user that it's a transparent change um, at the same time, you need to inform them that there's a change process going in and that it should not affect them, uh, but we're going to watch it very carefully to see that it doesn't. Um, in any case, uh, this problem statement is the same problem, no changes here, and when we go to the uh, output list, there'll be no changes here and no changes to the input list either. Um, because again, the input and output are not going to be changed. The user is not going to see any of any change effect. In the pseudocode is where, and in the course the VBA code that we're going to modify uh, is where we'll see the changes. We want to um, modularize the code. Right now, we only have one module. We've been doing problems up to this point with one module. All the code is in, and here's the end module statement for this one module. Uh, that's the way we've been doing the problem. But now uh, in doing a modular solution we want to break up segments of this code uh, that have uh, subtasks. We can identify subtasks and create submodules. The reason to do this again primarily, although there's about 16 reasons to do it, um, one of the biggest reasons, and it's in the chapter on modularity in our text, is for uh, trying to create some modules that have cohesive code. Cohesive code is something that we want to create uh, because uh, when we get to objects later on, we'll be looking for cohesive code uh, to create object code. And cohesive code, again, ha has code that is not specific to the application. It can be isolated so that we could use it somewhere else. It's code that we could transport to another problem and use it there. And if you think about it, the input statement and the output statement uh, are going to the screen and that makes those very specific to the application. So we want to separate the output statements. Here's one down here, here's another one, and there's a third one in this problem right here. We want to separate those out uh, and we also want to separate out the input because it's coming from the screen. Not all input or outputs uh, would be considered uh, like this. It's just input and output statements that are going to the screen because the screen is specific to the application. Okay, so we know we want to separate those out. The other code that's in here, um, namely sort of all this code down to where the output statement is, it has the possibility of being cohesive. So we want to try to separate that code out into its own module and uh, have that module be the cohesive code that we're looking for. There may be opportunities here to have three or four cohesive modules. Uh, the smaller the subtask that's performed in a module, the more cohesive the code because another application might want to use a particular subtask but not a series of subtasks as we have in this problem. So the smaller the amount of code and uh, not having anything in it that's specific to an application um, means that you're going to have more cohesive code and more likelihood of its transportability and more likelihood that it will become, could become object code. Okay, and this ends this segment. We'll take that up in the second segment.